Welcome to 3 Minute Pro. This is the Nikon F55, also known as the Nikon N55 in the US, introduced in 2002. It was the last consumer film camera produced by Nikon. I paid £16 for this and I've seen them sell for even less. Look how small and light it is in my hand. Some people suggest that because it's made of cheap plastic, it won't last very long. Uh, that has been said before. For instance, this camera is the Nikon EM and that came out 40 years ago. And because it was plastic, everyone suggested this isn't going to last very long either. And here it is 40 years later, working perfectly. You can buy them on eBay, no problem. Being made of plastic has other benefits as well. This surround here on the more expensive cameras like the Nikon F80, uh, that's often made of a, like a rubberized material and that isn't aging very well. So when you pick those cameras up, you get a whole bunch of black sludge coming off in your fingers and you don't have those issues with plastic. What you see is what you get with this camera. Uh, you've got all the usual modes. You've got manual, aperture priority, shutter priority and program. You've got a full auto mode and you've got the picture modes. You've got portrait, landscape, close up, sport and night portrait mode. Uh, when you're in manual, you use this button to be able to change the aperture. So using that to change the shutter speed. When you're in one of the automatic modes, this will set your exposure compensation for you. This button here sets your autofocus for you. So you press that down and there you can see you're using the central sensor, the right hand one, the left hand one, or you're letting the camera choose which focus sensor to use there. This button pops up the built-in flash and the light from the flash is measured through the lens. Focusing is reasonably fast for the sort of pictures I take. I take many portraits. I, I don't know what it would be like for something like action photography or sports. You have to be careful which lens you buy if you want autofocus. The lenses have to work with the built-in focus motor in the camera. This button here allows you to switch between autofocus and manual focus. There's a lamp on the front here that comes on when you're focusing in low light to help the autofocus. There is no way of switching this off. It won't come on during daylight though, so don't worry about it unless you're in low light. The F55 has matrix metering, which I found to be very accurate for pretty much every picture that I've taken. It's far more accurate than center weighted metering. Matrix metering means that you can rely on the light measurement regardless of how you compose the image in the viewfinder. There are a few downsides. Nikon have always nobbled their consumer cameras. One of the annoying things is that ISO setting is only via DX coding. You can't set it manually, it just reads from the film uh, cassette. But what you can do, if you're using something like Portra 400, which I'd rather use at 200 ISO, you can just press the exposure compensation and set it to plus one stop. The camera uses the Nikon bayonet mount, which has been around since the 1950s. One advantage of that is you can use lenses like this. This is a Nikon Series E 100mm 2.8. It's very sharp and it's the bee's knees for portraits. If you use it, it'll be manual focus only and you'll need a separate light meter. Pretty much everything since about 1977 will work on the camera. Loading film is simple. You just open the back, put the film in there, like so, then pull the leader across to this marker just here, just a little bit further. Now when you close the back, it'll wind on to the first frame. You can see it's wound all the way onto the spool so that it's actually winding the film back into the camera with each shot. That means if you accidentally open the back you'll only expose unexposed film. All your other pictures will be safe wound on inside the roll. This is a fun camera to use and you can rely on the matrix metering to get your exposure right for you almost all of the time. You can drop it in your kit bag with a spare lens and it won't take up much weight or space. It's about 20 years old, 
so you don't have to worry about replacing light seals, shutter speed and accuracy or other parts wearing out. I definitely recommend this camera if you use both film and digital and don't want to carry too much weight around. Don't forget to subscribe using the button at the bottom if you've enjoyed this video.